Hi, this is Felipe Osorio, and welcome to Second Earth Alternative. So I wanted to change up gears a little bit today, and instead of talking about UFOs, aliens, or paranormal activity, I wanted to talk about a possible paleontolo a paleontology discovery that might have been made in Antarctica. So in the last few episodes, I've been actually surveying Antarctica a lot, uh, basically trying to uh, verify some of the evidence that I showed you guys regarding possible ancient ruins in Antarctica. And in that process, I found something that I thought was so unique. But here's the ironical thing is, at first I thought it was too vague to show you guys. And I know in the last few episodes, there have been a couple uh, commenters who were a little bit upset about the evidence, saying that my evidence was too vague. And uh, the irony is that while, while I thought that this was too vague and didn't want to show you guys, today I ran across something that completely uh, verified my initial instincts. So I wanted to uh, show you uh, what I'm talking about. So if you go to Google Earth, uh, you can go ahead and check out the coordinates right over here. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to zoom in and I want you guys to kind of look at it and tell me what you think. And then I'm going to let you, and then I'll tell you what I think it is. So let me zoom in real quick and I'll show you what I mean. Take a look at that. I, I can rotate the image. You can see that it's casting a shadow. What does that look like to you guys? At first, I thought it was a fish. I was like, holy crap, here we have, you know, a fossil of a fish. And now you guys are like, okay, big deal. Why are you showing me the fossil of a fish in Antarctica? Let me show you. If you go to the ruler over here, and this is the very reason why I thought this was vague. Look how big it is. 120 feet, okay? So I'm going to clear that ruler. So obviously, if you find something that's 120 feet, you think that's probably just rocks. There's no way that could be possible because no fossil has ever been discovered that's 120 feet long from a marine animal, at least none that I'm aware of. Except today, um, just by random chance, when I was doing some research about prehistoric animals, I discovered about a dinosaur that lived somewhere between, it's not a dinosaur, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a form of a dinosaur actually because it's, a, it's technically a reptile. Uh, but it lived somewhere between 500 million years and 90 million years ago. And um, let me show you what the ichthyosaurus looks like. Do you see that? How close the resemblance is to what we have on Google Earth? Now here's what's so interesting, and, and this is what I did not know. Um, I was looking at prehistoric fishes, looking at sturgeons, looking at all these things that this fossil could, uh, could possibly represent. And when I looked at it, I saw that the biggest uh, fish fossil ever discovered was like something like 56 feet. So this would be double the length. And I'm like, there's no way. Except that I discovered that these uh, reptiles, ectosaurus, they were actually bigger than some of the biggest fishes ever recorded. And right now, as it stands, in terms of the paleontological uh, consensus, they believe that these animals grow up to 70 feet. So while 120 feet sounds absolutely ridiculous and you think right away it's not a fossil, when I realized that the biggest marine fossil ever discovered looks exactly like what I have over here, then I'm like, okay, maybe we do have something. So then I decided to go to Photoshop and do a little bit more uh, examination of this image. And let me show you what I uncovered over here. So if you go over here, here's the screenshot of the exact same fossil. And I decided to go ahead and, um, well, I, let me show you what the other um, ichthyosaurus look like in comparison to the fossil. And you see that they look very similar. It's, I mean, there's a lot of resemblance here, but let me show you what happens. When you put like a, a channel filter that basically highlights some of the blue wavelengths, which are shorter wavelengths, you kind of start getting more of like an x-ray effect. So if this were to be, uh, let's say, a petrified remains of the soft tissue of uh, the ichthyosaurus, look what happens when I put the channel mixer. It starts looking even more like a fossil. And I wanted to show you guys 
uh, what the uh, skull of Ichthyosaurus looks like. Check it out. Look how close the resemblance is. Very, very close, right? And then, here's the actual fossil of the Ectosaurus. So, moving on, let me show you uh, one more. Here is the same uh, Google uh, Earth image. Once again, I put a filter, and look how fossilized that looks. You can almost see the creases in the eye socket. And then, w one kind of interesting experiment that I decided to do is I took and I saw if it was possible to get this fossil to stand out from the surrounding area by simply playing with the channel mixer. And I'll tell you why I did this. So if, so check this out. You can see that you can get that to stand out. And everything else that is white that you see in this image is just snow. So I have nothing but snow in this one little area that I think is fossil, and I'm getting it to stick out with the channel mixer. So that means that whatever material this is made out of, it actually is a different material than the surrounding rock because it's giving off a different light uh, signature that I'm able to essentially pinpoint and then bring out the image while making everything else black and doing no other alterations other than just channel mixer. So it's telling me that this, which when I put the channel mixer does start looking like a fossil, is a different material than the surrounding rocks. So what do we have here, guys? We have possibly evidence for the biggest marine fossil ever discovered. How cool is that? One other thing that I kind of uh, wanted to uh, show you guys, it's, it's more like a little bit more fun. Uh, I went surfing the other day. Surfing is like one of my favorite hobbies. And, uh, and take a look at uh, who came out. So yeah, that's really awesome. Uh, I think that's actually the second time that I've encountered uh, dolphins in the wild. I think one of them was in Hawaii uh, snorkeling, and they came right up to me in Hawaii. And this time um, in Venice Beach, I've encountered them in Venice Beach multiple times. Like I've had like little baby dolphins come up like as close as like three feet away. But this is the first time that I actually cap captured one on video. But one other thing that I think is super funny that I, I, I think you guys would get a total kick of and I don't think you guys will ever see this anywhere else, um, but it's a surfing pelican. Either it's a surfing pelican or it's a pelican basically, um, you know, hanging on for its dear life. But, uh, but nonetheless, I want to show you this. So here it is. <laughs> guys thanks for joining me again uh, if you guys enjoyed the episode uh, go ahead and subscribe if you have not subscribed if you want to have uh, notifications of new upcoming videos just make sure you turn on the notifications and that is the episode for today thanks for joining me this is Felipe Osorio signing out <laughs>